Hey, I'm Johanna Olson, and I just launched my first EP called Come Back Next Year. Yeah, the launch night was was pretty fun. Uh, it was, you know, with anything, there were pros and cons, of course. But what stood out to me was just how encouraging people were. It, it hadn't really occurred to me that people were invested in my accomplishments in the way that they seemed to be. Like I had so many people come up to me and say, we're so proud of you, this is such a big deal. And that felt really good. I think, I guess I, I had felt like I was just in my own world, sort of doing my thing and, and I was putting on a show for people, but it was pretty it was pretty great to have people to have people so invested in, in what I was doing and to yeah, just be proud of me and to express that. That was unexpected and, and pretty great. I made you my sanctuary. I left everything that you asked me to. Yeah, well, my journey uh, getting getting to April 8th, which was the launch of the EP, uh, which I launched with a big party, that was, oh gosh, I could make that such a long story, or I could make that such a short story. Um, yeah, I had actually previously recorded a few of the songs that are on the album with at a different recording studio, and with a producer and it, it didn't quite work out. It just didn't fit where I was going and I ended up not using those tracks. So it actually took me quite a while to recover from that. Just in the sense of, you know, I, I think any artist or creative person can understand that when you're producing something, it's a part of you that you're actually, that you're laboring and so there's this this uh, process of actually laboring that idea, lab laboring that product, and there's a there's a huge process of trying to overcome your insecurities and questions about it, and trying to you know believe in yourself enough. And there had just been so much work involved in in getting to that point, and then to have it not produce the fruit that I thought it would was was discouraging and kind of exhausting. So it took me a bit then to to regroup and be like, okay, these are the songs I'm doing, this is the, the direction that I'm going in, and then I had to find people who I wanted to work with, so uh, that all came together. I'm really shortening the story. <laughs> and um, yeah, ended up recording with Ryan Deswan at Top Floor Recording, and recorded with my friend Maritz, T, my husband Scott, and Ryan even played a few licks on on the album and they're just such a great group of guys and they really brought to life the things that I had only imagined in fragments so that was pretty great. In regards to the EP launch party that was something for me uh, not everybody launches their EP with a big party <laughs> but that was something for me that that was a really important kind of kick in the butt because I'm quite a task-driven person and as I mentioned before, there's no kind of step-by-step -step process on how to be a singer and so I was in this stage where I was feeling quite overwhelmed like, oh, well, where should I gig and what kinds of gigs should I get and where should I put out my music and should I put out this music or wait till other music, um, wait till I've written other music and so this was, the EP launch party was kind of this this goal, like, okay, I'm gonna work up everything towards this. And so it allowed me to make a lot of decisions about, about artwork, about um, an atmosphere that I wanted to go towards. It, it forced me to get together a band and a set list and all those kinds of things, so that's that was an important thing for me because I recognized that's how I functioned and and honestly the last few months of planning the the lunch party most days I felt like I was swimming against the current of all of my insecurities and fears and and in order to overcome that I actually sought out 
kind of a coach who I would check in with a couple times a week and say, this is my to-do list, this is my struggle, this is what I'm, I'm finding difficult right now. And she would just encourage and she would help me make decisions and um, just really kicked me in the butt. And that was, that was another really uh, integral part of my process. But I don't consider this launch party or the release of my EP the end of anything. It's the beginning of things. You know, it's the, the start of something. Like, I, I'm pretty excited that I finally have something to share with people instead of just being background music at restaurants where I'm singing a bunch of Adele covers. I can actually present a little piece of me in the songs that I've written uh, with the people who I've written them with, and, and that's pretty exciting. So. Even, even though this is a wrap-up video, it, it's very much the launch of something else, you know, not just the launch of of this little EP, but the launch of, of my voice, I think. No, there's been all this build-up to the night, and the few days before the EP launch, I just kept thinking, okay, now I've got to put on a really good show for people. <laughs> like now I need to, now it's on me, <laughs> you know? Um, it's not about waiting for the printers and it's not about organizing with the venue or anything. It's about me and the show that I put on. I mean, in part my band, but my name's on everything. So, uh, so that was pretty nerve wracking. But the actual night was, was pretty fun. One thing that I had noticed in my whole process of, you know, doing a bunch of gigs of, of cover songs is that I realized that I, I was quite disconnected from the audience and that I was uh, not actually engaging with people. And so one of my personal goals for the night of the EP launch was that I wanted to actually be authentic and be myself, and in my husband's words, even if that meant being really awkward on stage, <laughs> I wanted to just be myself instead of put on a performer hat. And so I felt like I did that and, and it wasn't hard. Like it was pretty great to have a gig where I knew that every person in that place was there to listen to me. And, and I had such a fantastic band it sounded great and I knew they had my back so it was it was fun like it was it was actually fun by by the moment you know we all stepped on stage I wasn't I wasn't nervous or yeah I wasn't nervous at all it was just it was just fun it, was, it felt pretty great to be able to say like hey this is what uh, we've been working on I'm still digging digging Next for me is is hopefully more more music, more performances, more people who I can connect with through my music. I don't view this EP as you know my claim to fame or as you know like the one the one album that I get to make. I, I'm viewing it as the starting point, and and I feel that. I, I already feel that, that it's been a catalyst to something else. It almost feels like I just needed to get this out so that everything else could begin to flow. Uh, you know, I feel a lot clearer about the kind of music I want to make. I am more inspired to write songs. I feel really great about the musicians that I have around me. So yeah, I think this is just the beginning of it. I call this album Come Back Next Year kind of as a statement about that exact thing. Uh, just that, you know, this is a piece of my journey, but it's not my whole picture. It's not the complete picture of me as a singer, me as a songwriter. Um, it's just a piece of that. And so, you know, come back next year because I'll be here and I'll be doing something else and I'll be continuing to produce music and I hope you're around. I just want to say thank you to everybody who came out to the show to support me, uh, to the people who have known me for years, to the people who have just met me, and to the people who took a chance on me. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. I, I loved celebrating with you, and to the people who have purchased my album, 
or been emailed it. <laughs> Thank you for, for listening and for supporting me. Maybe we'll walk away Maybe nothing will change Maybe we'll fall asleep Maybe tomorrow comes as What I've been looking for Maybe the sky will fall straight Into my head